When Apple released the MacBook in 2015, the tech world really marveled at its super thin, light design, its gorgeous looks, and extremely premium build. But there were some shortcomings. Many were less than thrilled with its butterfly mechanism keyboard and the fact that it only had one USB Type-C port. That's it. And many were disappointed with its performance. Fast forward to 2017, Apple just announced and released its all new MacBook. I got my hands on it and I put it through its paces and here's my take on it. Hi, my name's Andrew and this is the AMD Tech Review of the 2017 MacBook. There are a couple of changes with this new MacBook. First off, the fact that it has a new KB Lake processor for improved performance and the fact that it has the new butterfly mechanism keyboard and unfortunately, it's still expensive. As with most Apple products, you're going to pay a premium for their devices. It starts at $12.99, very steep price indeed. Now there is a bit of confusion as to which processor you're getting and which model. The entry level starts at 1.2 GHz with a dual core Intel Core M3 KB Lake processor. The stepped up models are starting at 1.3 GHz and it also comes in a Core i5 or Core i7. Not your traditional U processors, but more of the Y processors just a rebad to remean for M processor. And they come in rose gold, space gray, gold, and silver. And it's still super thin and light at 2.03 pounds. This is one beautiful laptop with extremely excellent build quality. The model I have is the Core M3 7th Gen Intel KB Lake processor. It's got 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of PCIe SSD storage running Mac OS Sierra with High Sierra on the way later this year. And it sports a 12-inch IPS display with a resolution of 2304 by 1440. That's a retina display by Apple standards with 226 pixels per inch and it has color accuracy of 117% sRGB and it gets pretty bright at 340 nits. There is no question this is an excellent, outstanding display and Apple has even improved its brightness from the previous model. As we've come to expect with Apple devices, this build quality is off the charts. This is one of the best made, best built machines I've ever seen. It really is super premium. And just like its 2015 original variation, this only has a USB Type-C port, just one and no Thunderbolt 3 support, which is a bit disappointing at this price level. And luckily you still get a 3.5mm headset jack. Packaging is very premium as we've come to expect from Apple as they put a very heavy emphasis on the unboxing experience and this is no exception. In the box you get some documentation as well as color matching stickers. I have a space gray model and now you get space stickers and you get a 29 watt charger which uses USB Type-C to charge this device. Many didn't like the original butterfly mechanism keyboard of the original 2015 model. Well I'm glad to say and I'm glad to report that it has been much improved in the new version. Having used the keyboard on the late 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and Touch ID, I really like this style of keyboard and I'm glad they adopted it in this device as well. Now it still only has 0.5 millimeters of key travel, but they did something with the mechanism that allows it to feel more satisfying. You get more of a click feel and the more of a response. And of course, this is a backlit keyboard with different stages of backlighting. And I really have to say this is one much improved keyboard. Now, as far as the touchpad is concerned, Apple once again has come through with one of the best touchpads you'll find on any device. They do touchpads like no one else. I don't care what anybody says. These are some of the best, most responsive touchpads you'll find on the market. And in typical Apple fashion, you can do gestures. And of course, two finger scrolling on this is excellent. As far as sound is concerned, Apple has hit a home run once again. This has some of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard on any device. It's that good. Let's hear them in action. i30 
35 for about two weeks now, and I've been so impressed with it that I've made it my daily driver. Hi, my name's Andrew, and this is the AMD Tech Review of the Cube Thinker i35. So this is the webcam on the 2017 MacBook. I'm really disappointed. It's still 480p. It's still low quality. It's still grainy. And at this price point, they could have put an HD webcam on this laptop. And I think they chose not to. And I think they're trolling us. I really think Apple is trolling us. Not, not cool. As with any ultra portable, I'm looking for all day battery life. I want to see anywhere between eight to nine hours. That's my minimum standard for excellent battery life. And that's what you're going to get in this device. Under what I call normal use under my AMD tech endurance test with screen brightness at around 40% doing YouTube, Netflix, Photoshop, light gaming, and some browsing in the Safari browser, you're going to get about nine and a half solid hours. That's pretty good. But of course, if you're going to do intensive processor tasks such as video editing, heavy Photoshop, heavy gaming, you're going to get only about five to six hours at most. Of course, your mileage may vary depending on the task at hand, so keep that in mind. Now, as far as performance is concerned, it's much improved from its previous iterations. On the Geekbench 4 test, it did a 6843 on the multi-core score. Its built-in graphics did 16,852. It has a 256 gigabyte PCIe SSD storage, and here's how it did on the Blackmagic disk speed test. It did 1016.6 on the write and 1253.1 on the read. These are some excellent read and write speeds, that's for sure. There is no doubt that the KB Lake processor runs cool and has an improved performance over its predecessor. So, at the end of the day, can I recommend the 2017 Apple MacBook? Is it worth your hard-earned money? And the answer is, it depends if you're willing to pay the high price of admission. Here's what I like. First, I like a sharp, high-res display. I like its improved performance with its KB Lake processor. I like its outstanding build and design, some of the best in the industry once again. And I like the fact that it gets a good, solid 9.5 hours of battery life. All-day battery life, in my opinion. I like the fact that it runs pretty cool under heavy load, and I also like the fact that it has the improved butterfly mechanism keyboard. But as with any device, there are going to be things that need improvement, and here they are. First, I'm not crazy about the fact that it still only has one USB-C port, and to make matters worse, it's not Thunderbolt 3. I would expect any device starting at $1,300 to have Thunderbolt 3 here in 2017. But in the end, I think Apple has made just enough improvements for me to give you that buy recommendation if you're willing to get over that high price tag. And yes, this is a very expensive machine starting at $1,300 where you can get a nice gaming rig or a nice gaming desktop for the same amount. But if you're in the market for an ultra portable premium MacBook that really does have the nice looks, great battery life, outstanding speakers, and a great media consumption device, this is your ticket if you're willing to pay the high price of admission. So what do you think about the 2017 MacBook from Apple? I think it checks a lot of the boxes that you'd want. It's got some outstanding speakers, a much improved keyboard, better performance with its KB Lake processor, but it still only has that one USB Type-C port. Make matters worse, it doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 support. At this price point, I'm a bit surprised they didn't go with Thunderbolt 3. And it also has that very high price tag, probably scaring a lot of you away because you don't want to spend $1,300 and above on a Core M processor. But if putting that aside, if you take a look at the whole package, this really is a very elegant, well-made, premium looking device that is extremely portable and is a great media consumption device. So if you look at it from that perspective, this really does check all the boxes and really is outstanding in that regard. But if you're looking for a productivity machine, that's something that can really do intensive video editing like 4K and so forth, go for the MacBook Pro. But if you're looking for something that is portable, easy to manage, easy to take with you on the go, and you love the Mac OS, then this is the device for you. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know. Now, coming soon to AMD Tech is the unboxing and review of the Chewy Lapbook 12.3. I'm taking delivery of it tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll get the unboxing up tomorrow. And following that, after a few days of use, get my full review up and running. 
but what I'm really excited about is the fact that it has the high-res display, the same as this upcoming Surface Pro display, so it's really timely that this is being released, and the fact that it has pretty good build quality at a decent price. You can probably get it anywhere from $300 or less. So stay tuned for that unboxing to be followed by the full review. Also coming very soon to AMD Tech is the unboxing and review of the Microsoft laptop. Yes, it has the beautiful uh, pixel sense display. It's got the core i5 processor. I went with that, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD storage. It also has that burgundy color. That's the one I chose among the other colors. And I'm really looking forward to this because it looks like it has a premium build. It's a better take on the MacBook Air. It's got a better screen and it's got a better overall build at this point, perhaps. But we'll see. The proof is always in the pudding, as they say. So stay tuned for the unboxing and the full review coming very soon. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.